Del Pod, and we've got sport fishermen here. Uh, everybody's looking for the same thing, a nice big salmon. Blows down south there, there was another group ahead of them. They call this guy Papa Orca. In fact, Ken Belcom is to orcas what Jane Goodall is to chimpanzees. He's become a legend in the wild research community, and his work helped rewrite the books on the family lives and longevity of wild killer whales. No one in the world knows these whales like Ken Balcom. They're not just his subjects, they're his extended family. I've been interested in whales since I was a little kid. I got interested in orca primarily when I was contracted to do a study to tell the government how many were here. And they just hooked me. They just have an air about them, a charisma that draws you and, and just takes you in. My personal goals in studying this population were very simplistic. Uh, I was curious about just how long does it take for a whale to grow up? How often do they have a baby? How long do they live? What do they need in terms of uh, social environment and food environment? And uh, I haven't answered all those questions, but we've made approaches. And uh, we've yet to break into their mystique and understanding. When we began this study in the mid-70s, the species Orsinus orca had just gone through sort of a, a makeover in its human perception. They'd been considered vicious killers. And then they were uh, caught and put in ocean area, and then they were movie stars, teddy whales. They became show business and entertainment commodities. Now they're a whale watching industry, and they're a magnificent creature. All the things that people have thought they were probably are unrelated to what they really are. They're uh, natural leaders of this ecosystem that they live in. Not that they lead it, but they're the top of that food chain. They're uh, supremely adapted to their environment and it would do us good to pay attention to how well they're doing just so we know how uh, this environment's doing they're the indicator uh, the captures in this area started around 1966 when entire pods were rounded up Whales, mostly young whales, were removed. In about a 10-year period, we had 58 whales taken out. And uh, there were about 70 left when that capture era was over. And we found that they were resident here and that uh, if they kept up that kind of activity, they were going to basically remove all of the, the growing stock. We were going to be out of whales in another 10 years if they kept it up. Well, in 1970, I was hired to be a diver and work on the whale capture. So we ended up down here in Penn Cove, and uh, that's where it all happened. The actual capture was uh, 100 yards off of that uh, pier right over there. The holding pen was just a big circular net that was put down and uh, trying to get the smaller ones, work them into this little corral area. And, uh, and that's where the animals died. They got caught in the net and drowned. And although there were guys hired to patrol that for that purpose, you know, well, stuff happens, you know, and it did. Uh, We'd had a couple of three die, and they came and got us, and I guess they have to get a permit for six or so, and if you lose some, way, they're not on your permit, well, you haven't got them. So they had us cut the animals that were already dead open and put rocks inside their cavity there and put anchors around their tail and sink them. It was because of publicity and the money. Anyway, we had released them all, and they we took uh, the last one over to the uh, dock and and, uh, and all of the 
animals that were in the holding pen and the animals that hadn't been caught at all came over to the dock right where we were loading the last baby and uh, stayed there. And they just communicated back and forth and, and it was, uh, it was just awful. You know, the, the terror of just ripping that baby animal away from its mother like that. And uh, when, as soon as that stretcher left the water, when the baby whale was no longer in the water, that was the last of the communication and they knew it. And they just would, just kind of like they took a deep breath and they just all turned at one time and they swam out of Pen Cove. And they tell me they haven't been back since. And it was 28 years ago. At that particular time, we had other animals in the net. We were busy. I was sorry that we did kill the animals, but there was nothing I could do. They were already dead. And I had to be concerned about the live animal. So we split open their stomachs, put anchors on them, and sunk them, because no one else would take them. And that's, that's what happened. I did not advertise the fact that I lost them. I don't like to lose them. But uh, I did lose them, and uh, no one would take them. So I wasn't going out and put up a big billboard. I, I killed X amount of animals. I did it, and uh, that was it. It was just that simple. Uh, I care more about these animals than all the environmentalists put together. I think my ex-partner and myself have done more for these animals than all environmental groups put together. We've showed the public what they are like. They're beautiful animals. Well, anyway, um, uh, when we were loading them on from the water onto the truck, terror of the uh, separation. Well, it's the worst thing that, that I ever did and er, that ever happened to me in my life. Is there any questions or you just want to stand there and watch a grown man cry? <laughs> it changed my whole life and uh, it uh, I very seldom can get through it without breaking down and it's embarrassing and I don't, I don't tell the story very often but it's, uh, I just it, it, it just, it's a very strong thing that happened. And uh, if people realize that every time they bought a ticket to see one of these animals, that they're supporting that kind of thing, I don't think they would spend the money to go to, to go do that because nobody would want to see what I, what I saw. Now, now I'm against any animal like that in captivity, whether it's an ape or a gorilla or whatever, you know, I just don't think it's right. And, uh, once you see that, what I, what I saw, what I tried, what I tried to explain, uh, I don't see how anybody could see it any different. Well, when the uh, first captives went on display, uh, I went to see the early SeaWorld parks, and uh, I was amazed at how much could be learned by having the entire animal visible by being able to draw blood and samples from it, uh, how trainable they were. But there was just a limit to all that. It was like uh, studying a fish in a bowl. It had nothing to do with the system that it came from. And uh, it took long enough to learn about how to keep them alive in that bowl. Now we have to uh, translate some of that knowledge and all of what we get from the wild to learn how to keep them alive out here. Baby orcas stay with their mothers all their lives, and that's how researchers determine the ages of the orcas. Babies always stay with their mothers, who in turn stay with their mothers. So, if you figure in the age that female orcas generally have their first baby, which is about 13 years, simple math can help you calculate the ages of the animals. 